You can call this a reaction video, or I guess you could say a, you know, a Me Too video, as in I agree with this as well. Um, I saw this video by Chujitsu about avoiding avoid joining this cult in BJJ if you're an older grappler, where he's basically talking about people who want to go hardcore hard all the time in their training. And he's saying that this is a very common BJJ problem. And I'm here to react and respond to that to tell you that it's not just BJJ. So shout out to uh, the sensei that calls himself Jiu-Jitsu. My friend, it is not just Jiu-Jitsu. This is a common martial arts problem, period. And while, no, I don't have a, I don't have a BJJ um, strong background. I do have a shodan in Judo and I have more than shodans in um, Taekwondo and Kyushu. This problem of thinking that hard is the only way to train is just a common martial arts thing. And this is how we do it in the striking arts. I think that we watch too many of those old kung fu movies where you see the guy like doing a horse riding stance, as they call it in some styles. And it's, for Taekwondo, it should be called sitting stance. You know what I'm talking about. Where you, you look like you're sitting down in a chair. You got your legs wider than your shoulders. You're doing that sitting on, let's say, like a, some bricks or something, and then you hold your arms out, and maybe the guy's got like a huge log that he's holding up or something, and while he's doing that, somebody's repeatedly kicking him in the stomach or other places of the body that you got to toughen up, and you got a key eye to fight against it. It's basically like saying that you need to be training iron body hard every day in order to, in order to learn. Another variation of that is people who think that you must spar hard every day all the time, period. And that's the only way to learn is you can't go into any type of training with a specific focus in mind. So let me play a little bit of this jujitsu clip here that I can do by fair use. Listen to it. But, you know, when you get older, you can come back to this video later. But for especially for a lot of the older people watching, I wanted to give you guys some ideas of one of how to improve in jujitsu without destroying your body. Um, but also two to avoid this cult that's in jujitsu. Right. You know, and I it's not just jujitsu. Trust me, it's not just jujitsu. I mean, jujitsu itself is kind of a cult, right? But there's this sort of subcult in jujitsu that many of us join for a period of time, whether we know it or not, right? We do it unconsciously. Um, and that cult is this. I don't think it's so. I don't think it's unconscious. I think we do it consciously because we saw too many old kung fu movies, or. We think everything should be like Kyokushin. And this is no disrespect to Kyokushin. But if you want to train like that, then why don't you take Kyokushin? Where you would learn how to do it. You would learn how to up the ante and turn up the heat on it. But I'm pretty sure I've never taken Kyokushin. So I'm going to step out on a limb here. I bet they have a method to the way that they're doing it. And I bet they don't start off at 100% the first day right out the gate. I bet they teach you how to build up to teach your body how to take the impact that we think that Kyokushin is, those of us who aren't actually in it. This cult of like hard training every single day, this cult of gym wars, right? This cult of everyday pohada. I'm a gringo from Kentucky. I don't know if I'm saying that right, right? Pohada. <laughs> but it's this hard training mindset that like basically someone holds up the training intensity and the training volume of some 20 something year old who's getting ready for some ADCC championships or whatever. And holding that up is that like that should be the gold standard for everybody that walks in the gym, right? Now for Taekwondo, what would be that? Uh, everybody should be training like they're going to the Olympics. And these days now, we got to be able to do backflips to be cool in Taekwondo. We got to be able to do flips. We got to be able to do backflips or you got to be able to. Everybody has to be able to do super huge jump kicks. The only thing I do stick with is the, is the high kicking thing. Because that is attainable. That is attainable without having to do 360 degrees vertical rotation of your body. You can learn how to do high jump kicks and high and, uh, high kicks with minimal risk to the body if you take your time and build up to it and stretch. And let's yeah, see, I think for judo, it's pretty much like the same thing that they espouse, that he's espousing for BJJ. You got some people that just think that you have to 
you have to throw hard all the time. When you put somebody in an arm bar, you got to just crank it up to 100. And now in my um, with my method where I when it comes to sparring, we blend the elements from Taekwondo and Judo. So it's really hot keto sparring, in my opinion. There are people who want to crank just instead of trying to let the technique do do its job. They want to try to use all their brute strength. It's, this usually happens with people who are brand new beginners and it's their first time coming in. As people advance, they stop. You got to be careful if people want to just like force it and try to crank somebody's neck or try to just crank on the joint to try to get the person to tap instead of letting the technique do it. Yeah, you have to use some strength, but you shouldn't have to use that much strength. You should have to use minimal strength. And they, they want to when they, if they're striking, they want to just they want to punch as hard as they can. They think that they think that the, the grunt, the, the hard, the force, just trying to generate power is what's going to ultimately make their technique work. Not realizing that some of the hardest hits I've ever taken. You can call them accidents, but it's honestly just because. It was done at the right time. It was done at the right time. It was correct. And, it, and you know, I just fell right into it. Anytime I've ever made maximum impact with someone, I whatever, whatever I've studied, the technique was done at the right time. It was just a perfect set of circumstances. Everything lined up with it beautifully. It didn't take a lot of physical strength on my part. Now, here are my tips for older martial artists. In addition to the things that he suggests in his video, I say I, I tell people this because this is what I do. Some type of strength training, even if it's body weight, because most of the times I can only do body weight. I don't have time to go to the gym all the time. Some type of strength training, some type of cardio and some type of flexibility training, especially if you're older. But I think if you work those strength, endurance flexibility, find a way to work on those a few times a week. Then when it comes time to your technique, because, you know, I work in a, you know, work, married, family, I have to make time to take care of, you know, my non-martial arts obligations. Then when I have, so if I'm short on time and when I have time to um, go over my stuff, I can focus on something. I can focus on doing all my forms. I could focus on let me work a particularly difficult technique that I'm having a hard time doing. That's called deliberate practice. And if you like someone told me one time before, I'm not going to say his name because I'm going to drag names into this stuff because you know how you are, Internet. I was wisely told decades ago, get your huffing and puffing done somewhere else. Get your huffing and puffing done somewhere else. Because if you get your huffing and puffing done somewhere else, when you move, you can think about how can I best move under stress? So one thing I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to close. So one thing I used to do, especially when I was taking Tang Sudo, didn't get a black belt in Tang Sudo, but did get a black belt in Taekwondo. And the Tang Sudo skills were directly transferable to the Taekwondo. So what I would do is if there was a new kick, especially I'm having trouble with this kick. Let me see if I can do it by itself. Then let me see if I can continue to keep up with doing any class. OK, now let me see if when sparring comes, if I can pull it off against somebody that's a lower rank. Then let me see if I can pull it off against somebody against, you know, that's the same rank. Then let me see if I can pull it off against somebody that's a higher rank. Of course, most of the time, I never made it to putting it off against somebody that was a higher rank. But if I'm trying it, and this is the beauty. See, when you practice like that and somebody sees that you're working on something and they're more experienced than you are, you know what they might do? They might help you. They may give you tips and say, oh, I see you're working on such and such and such. Don't do that. Try this. OK, now you got that. Now try this. OK, now have you ever thought about that? See, if you would work on things instead of just thinking that you want to come in there and just go wild all the time. 
Yes, people are competing against you, but also people may try to help you because that's what they're there for. Because in the martial arts, that's really what we should all be there for. We should all be there to help one another improve. Because really the only time you should be competitive is when it is a competition. So thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. See, please share this with people. I like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts and peace. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And for those of you in other styles and you, you feel like, oh, we got this hardcore, you know, you got this hardcore subcult. The hardcore subcult is in every single martial arts style. And I guess I'm just glad that somebody else said it besides me. Peace.